Hello, my stats people. What's up? Okay, 10.2. Confidence intervals for comparing means. Um, I'm going to get right to it because we have to look at a lot of stuff. So we're going to look at the sampling distributions of the difference of two means. And then we're going to create confidence intervals. Make sure we're checking the conditions. And note to you all, it's exactly the same thing that we've been doing forever. Confidence intervals, checking conditions. Now it's for two samples instead of one. And it's means instead of proportions. And so if it's means instead of proportions, we're usually using the t-test unless in the very rare case that we already know sigma. But why the hell would you know sigma if you don't know the mean of the population? That's just like pfft, stupid. Anyways, rare, rare, rare case. I don't even know how that would happen. Anyways, why do we care about comparing means? Well, a lot of times you don't have a claim that you're trying to disprove. A lot of times you're trying to say, what store has a better brand of cheese puffs? <laughs> um, or which company gives you more actual chips in the bag, Lay's or Doritos? Um, what gives you a better mean weight or something, I don't know. Um, which, So there's a lot of different reasons why you would want to compare two different populations um, and two different sample means. Um, so comparing data, we tend to do that a lot. All right, what does the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 look like? Well, same scenario as we had with the proportions. Um, you're taking two different distributions that look like the following. So the sampling distribution of x bar 1 has the mean of the true population, the first true population, and the standard deviation of the population over the square root of whatever my sample size is, right? So um, same thing for x bar 2, except it's the mean of the second population and the standard deviation of the second population. Now, in the case where you don't have uh, sigma, you have to use the standard error, which is s sub x 1 over square root of n1 and s sub x 2 over the square root of n2. OK, so we are combining these both of these sampling distributions. We're subtracting one from the other. OK, and so when you do the difference of two sampling distributions, right, or two distributions in general, right, the mean is going to be the two means subtracted. So basically I'm taking this sampling distribution minus the second one, and I get the following. So here's our sampling distribution of the difference between x bar 1 and x bar 2. Um, like I said, the mean is mu1 minus mu2. And the standard deviation is just you add the two uh, variances together and take the square root. Um, so this is the same thing that we did with proportions, except now instead of having a square root of p times 1 minus p over n um, and that whole formula, right? Instead, my standard deviation of x bar 1 and x bar 2 are these guys up here. Okay, so you just fill those in, you square them, blah, blah, blah. And ta-da, you have the formula for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the difference of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Whew. Okay. Um, so if we want to set up a confidence interval for mu1. Also, note, this is true only if our conditions are met. So we haven't even checked our conditions yet, but if those nor the normal, random, independent conditions are met, then we will have this distribution. If we don't, then, you know, we'll talk about that. Um, okay, so if we're setting up a confidence interval for mu1 and mu2, the difference between the two. Um, 
we have the statistic, same thing that we've always had, statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. In this case, the statistic is x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Your critical value at this point, we're assuming that we know sigma, which is a stupid assumption. At this point, we're assuming we know sigma. So our critical value is z star times the standard deviation of the statistic. Um, and in this case, our statistic standard deviation is uh, what I just highlighted. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite that in. Finally, we can get to the realistic scenario, which is, wait, but we don't know sigma. So instead, we have to use standard error because, you know, we don't ever know sigma. <laughs> so we have to use the standard deviation of the statistic instead. Um, but oftentimes, that's way far away from the true sigma. And so when you use standard error with means, you have to jump to the t distribution um, and use your degrees of freedom and such. Right, um, degrees of freedom, still n minus 1, but now you have two samples, and they might be two different sizes. You might have one sample that's 35 and another sample that's 14. Um, and so you have two options when you're talking about degrees of freedom for a two-sample um, two mean test. Um, and option one is taking the smaller of the two degrees of freedom. And the other option is to just let your calculator figure it out for you and use that one. That one's a little more, I mean, that one's the true degrees of freedom. Um, and there's this really funky formula that they use to calculate it, um, which you don't need to know. But either pick one or the other. It doesn't matter. Um, but you tend to get a little more degrees of freedom if you use the one from your calculator. Um, so that's a little bit nicer, which means your um, confidence interval will be slightly smaller if you use the one from the calculator. But it doesn't matter. You can use either one. All right, so there you have it for your degrees of freedom. So if we are using the t-distribution, let's reiterate what our confidence interval is going to look like. Your statistic will still be x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Your critical value will be t, not z. And your standard deviation is going to be your standard error instead. All right, how about them conditions? <laughs> 1, random. Both samples have to be random. Check 2. Normal are both samples approximately, are both sampling distributions approximately normal? And you have to check this by either, you either need to have n greater than or equal to 30, or for both of them, or if one or both are less than 30, then you have to graph them and check for deviations from normality. So no skewness, no outliers, etc. All right, so there you have your normal check. Um, check for independence. Same thing as always. Either each trial has to be independent, or if it's sampling without replacement, you have to have the 10% rule for both samples and populations. Okay, otherwise the setup and everything is the same. It's really not that bad. It's the same thing we've always been doing. Um, just a little more tedious. Um, all right, so let's do an example. Do We want to know, do plastic bags from Target or plastic bag, bags from Walmart hold more weight? A group of AP stat students decide to investigate by filling a random sample of five bags from each store with common grip. They clearly do not know <laughs> that that makes so much more work for them later if the sample size is so small. Ah! Anyways. Um, five bags from each store. They did not have a good stats teacher. Um, with common grocery items until the bags ripped. They then weighed the contents of each bag to determine its capacity. Here are the results in grams. We've got Target and Walmart. Okay, And then it says, construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the difference in mean capacity of plastic bags from Target and Walmart. So, step one, enter both sets of data into list one and list two in your calculator. I'm going to put Target in list 1 and Walmart in list 2. Okay, I have put it in my calculator. Hopefully you have as well, and I'll show it to you later. But for right now, we got to make sure we stay plan do conclude. So let's state what we're going to do and everything else that we have to do.
All right, so you want to state something along the lines of what you're going to be doing, what your confidence level is, um, and then state what your parameters are. Okay, then we want to plan. Check your conditions. One, random. Are both samples random? Yes. Two, normal. This is our ugly check because we have a really small sample, so we have to plot our data. So let's actually graph them. Remember how I told you I put them in my calculator? Here you go. I have the data in my L1 and L2, Target's in L1, Walmart's in L2, and then we're going to go and uh, plot those. So I'm going to go to stat plot, and I want to plot both of them, so I'm going to have to turn two plots on. So I plotted both data sets. They're both approximately symmetric. I mean, as symmetric as you can get with five data points. Um, so you sketch those and then make a statement about it. So we say something like, since there are no, there's no obvious skewness or outliers, it's safe to use the T procedures. And then we can go on to the next independent, super easy in this case, because we know for sure there are more than 50 bags in both Target and Walmart. Okay, now that we've finally checked our conditions, we can actually start doing some calculations. Um, so really, the biggest thing that you need in the do section is um, stating your X bar and your standard deviations of the sample, um, and then what is your test statistic and your confidence interval, which we'll probably also get from the calculator. So let's just include a little bit of work just to show that we know what we're doing, and then we can have the calculator do the rest of it for you, for us. Using one bar stats to get X bar and our standard deviation, we find uh, target has a mean of approximately 12,826 grams, and uh, our standard deviation of target is about uh, 19... 112. For our sample mean for Walmart, we found uh, 9,234 grams, and then uh, the standard deviation was 1,474 grams approximately. So next we have to find our T star value, um, and for a 99% um, oops, 99% uh, confidence level, the T with degrees of freedom um, and minus one, and in both cases it's four, so we don't have to worry about picking a smaller of the two. Um, we find that T star is approximately uh, 4.604. So we set up our confidence interval the same way we always do. Statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. In this case, it's standard error because we don't have um, sigma. And our statistic is uh, the mean of target minus the mean of uh, Walmart. Standard deviation of the statistic is that funky square root of S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. Since we've already written down what all of these variables are uh, numerically, then we can just have the calculator do the rest for us. So do you, you want to go to stat tests, two sample, not a test, that's a hypothesis test, um, but we want a two sample T interval, not proportions. Um, and we have data, so we're going to click that. We've got L1 and L2, and our confidence level is 0.99. Calculate. No, we're not pooling. Calculate. And voila, there is our confidence interval. Then conclude in context, we're 99% confident. The true difference, target minus Walmart and capacity lies between negative 100.9 and 7,284.5 grams. Um, the second question, does your interval provide convincing evidence that there's a difference between the mean capacities? Um, honestly, I mean, it's likely, but zero is in this interval, and that means um, it is a, a statistically likely possibility that um, the true mean could be zero. So we can't exclude that.
although the evidence was pretty obvious that target has a higher capacity, so if we had a larger sample size, we'd probably see that pretty quickly.